Welcome back to Ace Academy, everybody. Uh, last time we left off, we basically found out that Nikki turned our bike into a sparkly unicorn mess. Then uh, basically we invited to the beach, and it looks like we are skipping ahead in the future. And also, we've seen a sweeter set of cowrie that we will just not talk about. <laughs> okay, let's get back into this. Time passed in a blur, and suddenly it's been a month since Nikki and I moved to Isokaze. Isokaze? And I started Ace Academy. My team and I are stronger than ever in winning streak. And our winning streak has not been broken. Kairi, Shao, Mayu, and I spent the evenings practicing in the hangar, learning how to anticipate each other's needs on the field. Yuna continues to manage our sponsorship from Dashu and becomes more comfortable with the team. Valerie works hard behind the scenes uh, to continue to update our gears. And after all the tweaks she had given Eagle, I'm more confident than ever in my mech's abilities. I had, I had a surprising number of companies reach out to me, the partner, and research my core, but I've declined each invitation. I don't feel comfortable having strangers poke around and prod up my dad's legacy, especially when I don't understand what's going on myself. Aside from the team self, Karen and I occasionally meet up for lunch, in which she betrays my food <laughs> she berates my food choice and offers me healthy alternative recipes. I pass those on to Nikki, who already loves Carrie, even though they haven't met. On the home front, Uncle Kaito is still busy as ever, and now that he's a newly opened cafe, has become insanely popular. Nikki spends most of her time at school's cooking club, which has gained a lot of traction among her, the students. Sadly, that means I had to fend for myself when it comes to food. At least you have Carrie teaching you. Well, I wake up and sound my alarm and begin my morning routine. When I enter the kitchen, I make myself a bowl of cereal. Nikki already left for school. My phone has one off. Do, 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 do. Let me respond to this text message. When I enter the kitchen and make myself a bowl of cereal, Nikki already left for school. Lately, she's been leaving almost, uh, or leaving early almost every day. It barely passes a fa or phases me anymore. Dang, that's what happens when I get sidetracked by a text message. Especially after I, f uh, after I found cereal in the grocery store, the most expensive box of Dagger Flakes I've ever bought. So you mean Frosted Flakes, my dude? Finishing up breakfast, I hop my bike and head to school. Hey, Valerie's already waiting for me and waves me over as soon as I enter the classroom. I have news for you. Good news or bad news? She pauses and then grins playfully. Come with me to the hangar after class and I'll show you. Nudes? Better be nudes. That's good news. The hangar is so something to do with my core. What else would it be about? <laughs> my powerful thruster is trying to stray uh, exterior lightning. <laughs> Quick, if you're interview. so lightning quick, how come Eagle gets so beat up during matches? I don't know, Chase. You've been watching. They clearly aren't mine. Pretty sure they are. You were strange at definition so big, considering most Eagles I've ever gotten is a few scratches in his armor. Probably I've seen her. some dents in there, too. Shut up. There are some, sure, from blocking. Mm -hmm. I'm going to reload that. Uh, that was going to be a surprise. Good point. You spend so much time in the hangar. Sometimes I wonder if that's where you sleep. I'm not sure sleep is the term I'd use. Uh, More like an extended rest. Eh. She smiles sweetly. Right. My phone is garbage. Trying the text real quick, but my phone's like, nope. Valerie waits expectantly. So? So what? You haven't said yes yet. Will you come with me to the hangar? Yeah, I'll go with you. Good. I was starting to think maybe you didn't want to be alone with me. Oh, heavens. Before I can respond, the professor raises her voice at the chat over the chatter. Good morning, everyone. In today's lesson, we will cover... <laughs> That's all for today. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, faceless lady. I appreciate it. 
Just as I finish, uh, just as I finish passing, packing my things, Valerie grabs my hand and pulls me towards the door. Let's go. Sure, just give me a min. But she's already started walking with me in tow. I hastily grab my bag. Or we can go now. We cut across the campus and enter the hangar through the main entrance instead of the pilot's lounge. Inside the hangar, Valerie rushes straight to Eagle's terminal, shooting impatient glances at me as I fall behind. She sets herself in front of my terminal, and after typing into sequence, she proudly points at the screen. Check it out! Good nibbies! I'd rather be checking you out, eh? I guess, uh, slides across, uh, staring at over terminal rest on Valerie. I drink the curve of her waist and higher skirt accentuates the outline of her hips. She's holding back a smile when she releases and notices my stare. Although I'm relieved I can hold your attention better than this terminal can, you might want to hold that thought and focus on the screen. Nope, I'm happy with my choice. Then let me fix that. Valerie stands behind the monitor and laughs at my disappointed. Yeah, we're gonna change that though, because we're going about that carry life. We can't, we can't get her thirsty. I glance at the screen, see continuous long strings of numbers. Valerie's trying to hold back a smile, waiting for my reaction. I'm not sure what I'm looking at, but I don't want to disappoint her. This is really cool. I know. It took me forever to find it, but I think this is the big breakthrough we've been waiting for. Oh really? Oh, uh, the character says the same thing. Really? What does it say? She pauses and then smiles coyly. You have no idea what this code is, do you? That's the last question that gave me away. Uh, let's just d double check. What's the third option? No, oh, fuck, I didn't read it. Stare silently. I stare at the uh, continuous string of numbers on the screen after a moment, Valerie waves her hand in front Hello? of me. Hello? Anybody there? I step back to reality. What are you doing? Just making sure you're still there. You spaced out on me. I was checking out the numbers. Pretty cool, right? It might be if I knew what it was. Well, you know how all the system scans we've been doing haven't shown anything new? Yep. Our approach was the mistake. I was thinking, if I wanted to leave a secret message on a system, I would embed it into existing code and spoof the service identity so that it would remain inconspicuous during scans. That makes sense. Well, I was doing a manual evaluation through listed services during the last week and noticed a discrepancy here. When I tried to execute it, it came back with this screen. Your voice grows with excitement. I'm positive there's something behind this code. Wonderful. Really? Then let's find out how, what that is. I was hoping you'd say that. Tell me how to decrypt it and we'll find out in a second. What makes you think I know how to do that? She raises an eyebrow. Doesn't any of this look familiar? I squint at the screen scrolling through the code. No, although Dad and I worked together to build Eagle, he didn't let me touch programming for the core. Would you be able to hack it? Oh, he bites your lips and see things. Mm, yeah, but it might take a few days. That's probably still faster than it would take me to figure it out. She grins. I won't argue with that. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. But only because you're cute. Of course I am. She winks at me, then turns towards the terminal. Thanks? Earning gross on code value gives me a short wave of dismissal. Like, get out of here, ho. I'm fixing your machine. As I find my way out of the hangar, my phone dings the email from the school administration. I scan through the contents. Hey, uh, due to disqualification of Strike X, my team will now face Ona Bogisha in this week's match. I wonder what Strike X did to get themselves disqualified. Did they use a performance enhancing meme? Did they download more RAM? Those bastards. My phone vibrates from with a group chat from Shell. Guys, you see that email? I type out my response. Yeah, wonder what Strike X did. Probably lied about something important. That's one reason why I left. Wait, Strike X or Sharon Carey's old team? Damn. As I'm typing a question for Shao about what happened to Strike X, a text from Mayu comes in. Looks like we gotta go against Ono oh Bogesha. Ono oh Bogesha. Sounds familiar, but I can't recall what team they are. Who are they again? A team we must demolish. Of course, Carrie would write in all caps. Whoa, even more aggressive than usual. Shut up, show. Show, 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 show. Please don't be upset, Carrie. I'm fine. 
While the text came out, I racked my brain trying to recall how I know that name. All right. I mean, never mind. They're all the girls. Uh, never mind. They're all that all girls team, right? Yeah. They're supposed to be pretty good. Who cares? I won't let them beat us. The text cease after that. Probably for the best. We're gonna kick their ass. Team Carrot. What do I feel like doing now? Bam. I'd like to get my early start in staying for the next chapter of time. They have to liberate. More carry, more carry, more carry, more carry. Yes. Library's full of students, and I don't spot any free tales. Looks like the other people have the same idea. I spot a familiar plume of red hair sitting on a table. It's ready to spark carry at the library. She doesn't notice as I approach. If I didn't know, I'd say she looked half asleep. We will save because we are not an imbecile. Move over, you're hogging the entire table. Hey, you didn't have to save a seat just for me. I'll just save mine if I join you. Glad I ran to you. This place is packed. Carrie looks around groggily like she's just woken up, then greets me with a yawn. Yeah, I guess it is. Are you feeling right? You look a little. I look a little what? Her eyes flash. She might be groggy, but she's still Carrie. A little tired. Everything okay? Huh? No, I'm fine. Why? Bags in her eyes tell a different story. I'm just concerned. For a moment, almost like she's going to pull back and hit me. When her hands finally move, I flinch, but my surprise still is an intense and dramatic stretching yawn. I guess it doesn't matter if I tell you. And it's just because she's tired, uh, but she seems relieved to be talking One about One of it. the volunteers at the daycare left, and I had to take on their students. We were already short-staffed, but I'll now it's much worse. That'd be great. That's a relief. What? Why? I thought it was uh, might be something serious. Her, uh, her, she nears her. Serious. Eyes. Yeah, like family or school stuff. You're saying that I don't take my job with these kids seriously? No, that's not what I meant. Carrie lets out another big yawn. Don't worry about me. I just have to work a few doubles until we find a replacement. Why don't you share the work with the rest of the staff? Do you know anything at all about educating children? Not really. Obviously. At that age, one of the worst things you can do is to switch up their instructors. It has a terrible impact on their learning. Children need stability and time to build up trust. And while they're getting used to us, we're learning about them. It takes time to understand how a child learns, what they're feeling. Some kids might have an easier time with change, and it won't matter as much if they are rotating staff members. But other kids already have unstable homes to go home to. The daycare is the only place they feel safe. Well, I didn't realize. And if I have to work a little bit harder for a week or two to make sure they get the best care, I will. Can I help? Still, you need to take care of yourself, too. I am. You're falling asleep while starting. Are you going to fall asleep in the middle of a match, too? Clearly, you're not getting enough rest. She grasps her arm, but she doesn't say anything. I'm not trying to prank your personal life, but you're my friend, and I want to make sure you're okay. She continues to say something, but her look softens. Besides, if you get sick, then they'll have a replacement instructor anyway. Her eyes widen before she looks I, down. I guess that makes sense. She says. Maybe I'll take it a bit easier. I smile now. But I'm fine right now, so don't worry about me. Yes, ma'am. Don't call me ma'am! Yes, Miss Atami. No! <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Atami? I'm going to hurt you now. <laughs> she leans at the tail, uh, her fist ready to slug my shoulder. Thank you for coming and quickly lean back. Too far. My chair wobbles precisely. I grab a uh, grass wobbly for something to hold on to. Thud. Ow. A few students look over while I rub my sore head. Carrot blinks at me in surprise and ma uh, massive giggle. One sufficiently amused, she offers me a hand and helps me pull me upright. We started together in silence for a while. She can't usually gla glances at me, but averts her gaze whenever I look at her. Can I help you? Let's do that one. Uh, need something? What? You keep looking at me. Uh, do you need something? No, I don't. <laughs> Stop imagining things. Besides, you keep looking at me. Cindere. Her cheeks flush. Oh, should we call her cute? I smirk boyishly. What is up with your face? I merely tilt my head to the side and flash another Stop! gun. Stop! What? I haven't said or done anything. I. You. She stumbles. You're impossible! <laughs> 
Her cheeks red and she hides her face in her book. A study a while longer carries phone vibrates after checking the text. She starts up packing goodbye. Uh, let's load. Let's see uh, what we could. Uh... Mm, my bad, sorry. She blinks at me. You don't have to apologize. So wait, so you want me to look at you? That's not what I said at all. I'm so confused. She car shakes her head, exasperated. Never mind. Just go back to studying. She buries her face in a book. Uh, I'm certain hiding another blush. Okay then. We stay for a while longer, but Carrie's phone vibrates after checking text. She starts backing up. We say goodbye, and I leave a short time thereafter. Hmm. I'm in the pilot's lounge watching Japan vs. China Gear playoff match. The lounge is packed with students as this highly anticipated game. Many shout at the TV, but I watch in silence, sipping my drink and enjoying the ambience. Exciting game, right? Yeah, it's this guy again. Look at you, Mr. White Hair, main character looking ass. I glance up at the prize, but not. Akira grins and sits down in the seat across from me. Although he seems like a nice guy, we don't talk very often. It's unusual that he'd approach me. I suppose we do have really good. Uh, I suppose I do have a really good view of the TV, though. A string of boos and yells from the room. A shot takes one of Japan's takes out one of Japan's gears. People are really getting into it this time. Yeah, it was predicted that this year China was going to be a strong opponent for Japan. Damn it, China! And it looks like that's coming true. Is that why there's such a uh, is that why there's such a big turnout? I gesture to the crowded room. Akira nods. This is the first year that China's even made it this far in the playoffs. Everyone's watching to see who will come out on top. Who do you think will win? He doesn't even hesitate. Japan. What do you think? Hmm. Definitely Japan. China might be catching up, but their technology hasn't reached the same innovative standards as Japan's. Plus, this is year's lineup is completely new team, so they don't have the same player advantage as Japan's season team. I agree. He gives me a long look. I wonder what he's thinking. Speaking of matches, I believe congratulations are in order for you and your team. Me, your team is still holding them one spot on the leaderboards. Sure, but you guys are quickly catching up. You started out at rank 21, but you've already made it to rank 11. It's kind of weird to think. Of, uh, it's kind of weird to think about, it, and we're going against an even better team this week than, uh, since Strike X got disqualified. Yeah, the school is taking no chances with them. What do you mean? Kira blinks. You didn't hear? No. The team lead and one of his starting pilots got into a huge fight, and they did not hold back. I mean, there were some serious injuries, so both members obviously couldn't compete. GG. Why did they fight? The leader decided to sideline his starting pilot, and his pilot didn't like that. They're on the same team. Couldn't they just talk it out? I'm sure the leader had a reason. And Kira shrugged. I don't know all the details, but my guess is that there probably wasn't a good reason to sideline the pilot. Either way, because the fight escalated to the degree in which Ace had to get involved, the school is currently investigating the team. That's crazy stuff. Yeah. Who are you going up against now? On the Bogasha. Oh, Maze Team. Yeah, I hear they're strong. Akira nods. They are. But so are you. In fact, I'm really looking forward to my match with you. That might still be a while considering my team's rank. Right, but you guys have been on a winning streak, haven't you? Yeah. Because of that, your matchmaking rating, or MMR, is actually higher than your earned rank. That tends to happen with outliers like being an undefeated team. What he says it makes sense, plus I'm not going to question Akira about how being undefeated works. I have a feeling that if you beat Ona Bugeisha, it won't be long before we face each other on the field. Hmm. We don't go easy on you. <laughs> don't get too, too too comfortable in that number one spot. Kira merely smiles. We continue to watch the game in silence. After a while, Kira stands. I wish I could watch the end of this match, but I've got to head to class. I'll see you later. I nod. After Kira leaves, I check my phone and notice a text from Show. Don't forget tomorrow we'll be getting our game at the game one at the beach. Meet you there at eleven. As if I could forget that. I shove my phone back in my pocket and watch the rest of the game. Who won? 
The end Japan won with just one gear left standing. Yeah, it was a close game. I still got time uh, before I head home tonight. Shao Valor. Mm, I'm gonna go Shao. Why the fuck no? I feel productive today. Why not to hit the. I feel productive today. I don't want to hit the books and study just yet. Give away the channel of energy. I'll work out at the gym. Uh, physical education class. I haven't been getting any exercise. I need to get back into some solid routine. Head to the rec center and I change the lockers as I make my way to the weight room. I pass by gymnasium. Normally it's empty, but today it's full of people. There's a class going on right now. <clears throat> no other care of my curiosity. I peek in the room. The gym is checked out with equipment, bounce beams, still rings, para, uh, still rings, parallel bars, uneven bars, pummel horse, etc. I can't see the floor beneath the layer of blue mats. Students seem to fly and flip all the corners of the room. My mouth drops open as I wonder as I spot very famous hanging on the steel rings. Show! At the sound of my name, Show turns to the, uh, the sound of my voice and loses a grip. Uh, I wince when he comes crashing into the map below. After a second, he gets up and rubs his head, then looks at me. Uh, such grace, such elegance. I want to be sarcastic. Such grace, much elegant. I clap solely. I give that fall a solid 5 out of 7. Show frowns. Hm, not funny, man. I was going for a personal record. What are you doing here? Shao wipes the sweat off his face with a Trying stump. to balance on the still rings. I mean, uh, I don't exactly picture you as the gymnastics type of guy. Why not? It helps with staying fit, build strength, flexibility, core training. A pair of girls walk by us wearing Ace Unif Academy gym wear. Their stomachs are completely flat and they have perky features. They flash a smile as they walk by. Um, flexibility. You already said that Did one. Did I? <laughs> His attention is another group of girls protecting, uh, practicing the splits in the corner. Mm-hmm, and that has nothing to do with it. He grins. It's a bonus. I'm sure that's the main course for you. I will neither confirm nor deny that. This character is basically Zack. We both grin. Plus, you're competing with yourself to always be better. Hmm? You set personal records for yourself, and then the... Oh. You set personal records there. for yourself. And then the next time you come, you try to beat them. Uh, Not entirely sure where he's going with this. Like how long you can hold yourself up, I guess? That's just step one. Once you're comfortable just holding your weight, then you start doing tricks like handstands. It's a lot harder than you think. He motions towards the still bar. Try it! I, pat, I psych myself up. All right, let's do it. That's the spirit. I'm gonna break my ass. I jump and catch a, the still rings, letting my body hang. The rings wobble around as I try to pull myself up. Well, this is a lot harder than I thought it'd be. Use your core. I squeeze my core tight to do a pull up. The rings shake precariously. I have to hold them. Just don't panic and keep them steady. Uh, uh steady. Manage to, keep my, uh, to save myself after finding the center balance. I slowly do a three pull ups in a row. Shao watches with, on with interest. Afterwards, I'll go and drop to my feet. You sure you haven't done this before? You're, You're a, a pro! pro. <laughs> yeah, I hit a button better than anyone else. I grin. Nope, I had nothing to worry about. Piece of gig. So! Who's this? A girl I don't recognize is Shao, and she races over. How's it going? Hey, he told me. She looks me up and down. She smiles with interest. Who's your impressive friend? You saw him too? She nods. He told me, meet Brosif. Meet Brosif. Brosif, meet Hitomi. She blinks. Brosif? Shout nods and beams. That's Tom. Whoa, really? Why surprise? I nod slowly. He rubs my ch he rubs his chin thought. I've been calling you Brosif for so long I forgot. Hitomi laughs and playfully touches Shao's arm. <laughs> That's adorable. Oh, she's got that really high-pitched annoying voice. Like, huh? I think get. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Can't yeah, stop it. Show me. I'm just about done. How about you? I'm almost done too. Okay, I'm going to start packing. Come find me when you want to head out. Hey, Show notes. Hitami smiles at him in the ways that. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Shame. Shame. She bounces out of the gym. I assume she's going to ch change in the locker room. You two know each other well? Kind of. We met in this class. Her dorm building is actually the one next to mine. That's pretty coincidental. I know, right? 
Anyway, we ran into each other once, and when she realized we lived so close together, she insisted that we walk back together ever since. The way she acts towards Shao, it's obvious that she has more than a casual interest in him. Of course, knowing Shao, the fact is, isn't oblivious to him. Dude, you know she's into you, right? He blinks and raises an eyebrow. Uh, what are you talking about? Yeah, this is Zach. The laughing, the arm touching, the asking, they'll come back together. Shao shrugs. She's just friendly. You're looking too much into it. I'm telling Mayu. What well, I would think if you were walking girls back to their door. What? D don't do that! I thought nothing's going on. Nothing is going on. But I don't want Mayu to get the wrong impression. You're not dating Mayu, so why would she care? She wouldn't. Then what's the issue? She, you know, blinks it's not an issue, but still. Alright, alright. Shadow seems really confused about his own feelings. Alright, man, sounds like you'll be hanging out soon. I'll have to work out. Uh, I don't like that. I feel like we're being a little bit of an asshole there. Uh, I want to stick my nose where it doesn't belong. That's fair. All right, man. Sounds like you'll be heading off soon. I have to go work out. Shout out. <sighs> it was good seeing you. You should stop by again. I'll think about it. Chad gives me a brosive fist bump, and we head our separate ways. Brosive. I go out to work out until it's time that don't. We need more time with Calvary. That'd be nice. It's quiet time in the house. When I arrive home, I guess there's no one here. It's no surprise that Uncle Kaito's still at work and expecting Nikki would be home by now. She's been sending me more and more her cooking club, uh, spending more and more time at her cooking club. It must be going really well. I should take advantage of quiet time and study. As I hope Sarah, a blonde head peeks around the corner. Is that you, big bro? Ah, uh, yes, it is, isn't it? I pause at the top of the stairs. Yeah, I didn't know you were home. Nikki grins mischievously. Is it because for once I wasn't slaving away in the kitchen waiting for you to come back? Uh, you're like the waifu I didn't ask for. You do realize, uh, I didn't realize you suddenly turned into my wife. Nikki scares uh, me. Did you just call me your wife? <laughs> No, your comment sounded like something a wife would say. I uh, don't make this weird, bro. You made it weird. She shakes Stop. her head. Stop. Just anyway. Be nah, we're gonna. That's stupid. I was. I thought I was gonna be more sarcastic than this. Just know how the house can be this quiet for your hey! home. Hey. <laughs> ha! What? I'm always quiet. Is that what you call quiet? It was quiet before you got home, which means you're the one who brings the noise. Uh. Nikki grins. Anyway, before you so rudely distracted me, I had a question for you. What is it? Can you give me a ride to the beach tomorrow? I blink at her. How did you know I was going to the beach? Because tomorrow is Umiko's festival. How did you know about that? Nikki stares at me as if I have two heads. Because I live in Isokaze. Did you know about this? Not exactly. Shad didn't specify where we were going when we he, uh, why we were going when he invited and me. And you didn't bother to ask. Do I really need a reason to go to the beach? Fair point. Well, if you want to know, tomorrow is a festival to honor Umiko, the protector of Isokaze. A long time ago, the Dragon King threatened to drown the island if Umiko Yay, didn't marry him. Plot. So when she agreed to live with him in his underwater castle, she stole his magical pearl and now uses it to control the waves. That's pretty cool. How'd you learn about this? You know I've always loved mythologies. That's true. So, can you take me or not? Sure, I'll be leaving at 1045. Her face falls. Oh. Why, oh? Well, my friends aren't going to be there until later. So hitch a ride with them. Mm, I don't really feel comfortable asking them. Fine, you can come with me. But you're going so early. Then take the bus. She smiles sweetly. When I said early, I actually meant that's perfect. That's what I thought. <laughs> Nikki cranes her neck and peeks down the stairs. You behind. hungry yet? A bit, yeah. Me too. Come on, let's go downstairs and see what we have. I wanted to do some cooking. Let me real cool. She moves past me and flies down the stairs. I follow her slowly. He's just like, yeah, fuck it. Nikki and I whip up a quick dinner, then I spend the rest of the night looking up for more information about the festival before going to bed. I flip around and I flip around in bed too excited to settle down before finally drifting off to sleep. Is there gonna be Yes Damn it. I want that song to play more. 
as always guys with another day in ace academy comes another episode so hope you enjoyed this one i'll see you guys in the next one hope you enjoy the series hopefully you're enjoying it coming back as well